Okay, so in this uh, podcast, we're going to pick up where we left off. We're going to look at uh, some advanced settings, some extra advanced settings on box plots. We've actually already added quite a lot of little nuances to it in the previous one, but we'll just look at a little bit more detail quickly here how you can do some extra customization. Um, so again, we're here where we were in L10 box plots advanced, uh, working with um, L10 box plots advanced at RMD. I'm going to do another podcast uh, shortly after this one, basically showing you something very similar, but using the ggplot2 package and the function ggplot. So I'll pick that one up in the next podcast. Hopefully, manage to keep this one short for once. Um, so again, I've just reset. I've already reset my session here as before. And we're going to dive straight in. We're going to use this iris data set again. So again, normally you would have, instead of just using the default data set, we would actually be, um, we would actually instead be, be loading in some data um, ourselves here in a block. So for now, though, we'll do data iris. And we'll just do st structure iris again to remind ourselves what we're looking at. So 150 observations, five variables, three species of plant. For each plant, we measured a flower on it, and that flower was measured in four ways. Each flower was measured as sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. So we're going to set up a basic default box plot just to remind ourselves again. So this chunk here is going to look like this down here. So we've got our box plot for the three species, Setosa, versicolor slightly larger, and Virginica like slightly larger again. Now we want to start doing some uh, customizing. Um, and adding some extra adding some extra stuff on so we're going to do two box plots here side by side and we're going to do uh, so we set up a, a multi-panel we'll set it to be uh, two rows one column we'll do two box plots just for comparison so let's run that and then this box plot here so that's the base big box plot that you get out of our and the other way to do it then is you can set um, instead of setting that's sort of the old basic way of doing it you can set, as we did before, you can set the frame to be false. So again, just to remind ourselves, um, that is ordinarily in plot, we would use the BTY equals capital L for the box type. But in box plot, it doesn't take that, but it doesn't know what to do with BTY. Instead, it takes the frame.plot option. So we set frame.plot to false. So it's going to add a plot underneath it. So pop that out just have a quick look so that looks like this we've got um, the basic kind of one frames it all like that you might not like that full frame all around it you can take that frame off um, by using the frame dot plot as false what that does though is it takes the whole frame off but it also leaves you with this this sort of gap here so it doesn't actually join up the, the x and y axis it sort of separates them in a break now I don't know some people like that some people don't like it so I'll sort of show you how you can how you can override that it, in, in the next little bit of code so I've actually I used to not like this I've come around to thinking it's perfectly fine I don't know if that's just laziness um, or what but I think the other thing I would like to do actually is just add that to LAS equals LAS equals one so that we get so let's look at that we get this I've just used the LAS equals one to rotate those numbers just so they're facing uh, perpendicular to the x horizontal with the x-axis again um, so yeah, some people like that, some people don't, I've come around. Um, we'll have a quick look. So what we can do is we can actually remove the axes entirely, with the axes equals false option. Um, so that, I'm just going to take this through in steps. So there's a box plot with the axes removed completely with the false axes equals false option. We can add an L-type box on top of that using the box function. So box is a function. We can use the BTY option in here, the capital L. So that gives us something that now looks like this. So we've got those three box plots there again. But now we've got the full L drawn on it there. Now we can add, in the next code, we can add information to the x-axis. So we can run the box plot. There's the blank one. There's us adding on the L. And then this is us adding axis plotting, manually plotting axis 1. So again, that's the bottom one at positions one, two, and three. So at equals a sequence from one to three. That's our shorthand with the colon for one to three. The labels are gonna be iris, toza, versicolor, and um, versicolor and uh, iris virginica. Uh, font is three. That's going to use the italic font on those. So font equals three will set font. If you do question mark, Axis and then I think follow your way into the text options through the hyperlinks, you'll find out all the different options. 
one is the default, two I presume is bold, three is italics. CX dot axis, so again character expansion for the axis. Labeling is 1.2, so we're going to make them a little bit larger. And TCL are the tick lengths and the tick directions. We're going to change that to use 0.5 to push them into the plot rather than out of the plot. Uh, so there it is. So there is the plot added. So we've got our italic font for the Iris Tatosa, Versicolor and Iris Virginica now. Um, and we've got the ticks pointing in the way rather than out the way by default. So that sort of gives us that basics there. We can add information out to the y-axis instead, so we can come down here and we'll do exactly the same. So there's our box plot. You'll see me fixing all this. It's actually better practice to, you can shorthand true and false with TNS, but it's a better practice to write them out fully so there's no ambiguity. And also I like to keep my space in there. It just makes it easier for me to read what's going on. I'm not going to go completely crazy at this time. I'll be here all day. So here we go. We've got our box plot. We add the L. We add the axis one, so that's on the bottom. We add a title if you want, the X axis down the bottom, so that's the uh, axis label of species. We add axis two, which is on the left side, at position zero to seven in steps of one, so it's going to go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. LAS is one to rotate them, and the TCL again is positive, really 0 0.5, so it'll push them in the way. Remember, it defaults to negative 0 0.5. We add a title for that axis as well. And that title is petal length in centimeters. So we're really quite a, pretty close to, uh, to getting where we want. So that, that now is perhaps more a, a, a standard plot that you might want to see in a, in, a, in, a, in a paper or something. So that sort of fills, we use the BTY basically to fill in that gap there. And we've used additional embellishments now. We've learned how to change the font from regular type to bold to, to italic font. You can do the same to bold, etc. And we've seen how we can add the labels on separately and increase their character expansion. The only other thing you might want to do is add some color to the whole thing. So we'll do that here um, by just using a color palette. So we'll set the color to be rainbow 10. So they're the first 10 colors of the rainbow. We've only got three of them. So I'm guessing that's going to be red, orange, yellow is the plan. Um, so the first three, we'll get the first three colors of the rainbow. Um, so we can just run all that whole chunk all in one go. And sure enough, we've got red, orange, and a green, oddly. It's interesting. Oh, there's rainbow 10. There's not 10 colors in the rainbow. There's only seven colors in the rainbow. So, quite strange. Anyway, apparently there's more than seven colors in the rainbow. They're not full rainbows. I'll put that back to 10. I'll leave it at that and I'll stop talking rubbish. So there you go. Got red, orange, and a yellowy green. We'll give it that. So now we've got, uh, we'll add our box type of YL again and all the rest of it. So, that's how you can add color to those if you wanted to just, oh, I've skipped one actually. If you wanted to add, just make them all the one color. So that made them a range of colors. Now we just want to make them all one color. You could set the color equal to light gray. So that, that's that. There they are in light gray. So it's up to you now how you kind of go through and customize. The light gray maybe looks nice, but it does add ink. Some of the publishers won't like that. They might tell you to take it out. Um, color is that color we did is utterly arbitrary um, unless that color meant something really unless color means something you probably shouldn't use it or unless it's really necessary to demarcate or separate two things out uh, on your plot you probably won't get away with that but maybe on a website or something you could you could get away with it then we can come down here and the very last thing is if you want to save a tiff out so if you want to save a tiff or a jpeg you could swap that tiff to jpeg so we're going to save this image out well first of all in R it's kind of funny what you do unlike it's easier in ggplot actually this but here what you do is you make a tiff file first so we make our out file dot tiff you've got to bear in mind it's going to put that in the working directory by default so the working directory is actually one folder up from where I'm working so at the minute I'm working in L10 box plot advanced but actually it's going to drop it here if I run this code and I will it'll drop it here into the working directory which is you can see it written up here that's the working directory in the R lectures folder test it by hand with the get wd so that is where it's going to drop it home documents projects r lectures that's where it's going to put it not into the r l10 so to get it into l10 we could either change the working directory or we could add the uh we could add the whole thing on here by by hand actually so what you could do is you could put um you could do it like this you could write l10 Box plots, box plots, advanced, like that, and now that would push it out into a file which is called outfile.tiff in this new in this folder here. So we'd look in that folder and put it there. But I'm not going to do that. 
So put it back, so we've created a TIFF with compression equals LZW, so we're actually going to use a compression this time. Remember, you've got to be careful if you use compressions, it might not work on other computers. We create the box plot, we do it exactly as before, we save it out, and then we're missing off the bottom of this. We need a dev.off to close that TIFF file so it gets saved. So there we go, so we create our TIFF file, do our plot into that TIFF file, dev.off closes that file, and you'll see here now in this folder we've got this TIFF. If I click on that, one kind of hopes it'll open. I'm actually going to show this folder in a new window. There's my TIFF file that we created. Double click on that, and there it is there. So that is the TIFF file that we made with that code. So you're free to put that into Word, do whatever it is you want with it. Um, so that's how we do it. That's some additional uh, embellishments if you want, and how to save out as TIFF files. Uh, so the next podcast will hopefully be just as quick and run through, well, it probably won't actually, because we're going to do ggplot. So we're going to do box plots in ggplot. After that, we can pick it up with some actual modeling, I think, at some point soon in the, in the program.